Hi, my name is Greg Fellow, I'm Director of Public Health in Sheffield. Uh, this is the situation report as of today, the 19th of July, so-called Freedom Day. Um, firstly, on the timing of today, um, the science supports that this was the least bad day to do to, to implement step four of the roadmap. It's worth reading in detail Sage, Sage Meeting 93 and all of the modelling papers. Um, there is no risk or consequence free option available to the government and, and I support on balance the cautious and gradual easing of restrictions in the UK. Um, um, are probably one of the most difficult decisions that governments made over the last 18 months. Um, the data is hugely uncertain and it's difficult to know the extent and impact of the behaviour change that follows. What is clear is that the speed of what happens next absolutely depends on public behaviour, absolutely and utterly depends on, on public behaviour. Um, as I say, there's no risk or, uh, no risk or consequence-free option. There will be further waves of the pandemic beyond the one that we're currently in. It's definitely premature to frame today as Freedom Day. Um, the roadmap has come to an end. COVID has not come to an end um, uh, and we can all help to reduce transmission um, uh, and it's probably even more important our behaviour now as mandated restrictions are lifted. There's a lot of talk of personal responsibility. Personal responsibility is fine, it's necessary but nowhere near sufficient. There's, a, there's an element of collective responsibility here. Um, my actions, I would clearly I'm responsible for my actions, but in an infectious disease scenario, my actions also, inf it also affect other people. Um, so, um, so all up, I broadly support um, the, uh, the, the implementation of step four today. Um, the, it's important to get into perspective restrictions versus prevention of spread. There will be interventions to prevent spread of the COVID, the COVID um, epidemic for some considerable time to come and learning to live with is not the same as letting it rip. So on epidemiology, um, rates are increasing exponentially, um, have been for a couple of weeks now. Um, South Yorkshire is probably a little bit behind um, other parts of uh, the north of England, um, in particular the northeast, um, we're a long way behind the northeast, um, but all up rates are going exponentially, um, uh, principally in youngish working age people between about 15 to 35, 40, it's beginning to stack up into older groups now. Um, worth me saying that um, we're at exactly the same point as was predicted by the SAGE modelling. The SAGE modelling seems to have been about on the money. Um, it's um, no better or worse than was expected. Um, doubling time is about 11 to 23 days, thereabouts. As I say, we're, we're, on, we're on where the modelling said we would be at this stage. Um, SAGE were really clear, I'm really clear going slowly, um, uh, continuing to implement preventive interventions, you know the drill, washing hands, wearing face, wearing face masks, getting double vaccinated, staying at home if, I, if, if symptoms, are, they are the things that will make a difference to, to, to controlling spread. Um, lots and lots want to be cautious um, and I'd encourage you to be cautious because we're a long way from over here. Some very, very, very tentative signs that the rate of increase is beginning to slow down. Only the most optimistic um, conclusion would say that the current wave has peaked, so we need to be really care, really clear, re, um, a false dawns here. I think we will continue to see rise for a couple of weeks to come, um, and obviously there's some nail biting still to come on the euro effect as of a, a, a week ago, um, and the behaviour change that will follow today. Um, there is pressure in the NHS, no two ways about that, and that's not just within hospitals. Um, there's pressure within hospitals and within primary care. Um, there is an increase in hospitalisation. There is an increase in the number of people being admitted to intensive care units. Um, so there's definitely pressure on intensive care. Um, more people are being admitted from a, a, a standard hospital bed to intensive care. Um, uh, whilst the scientific advances in vaccines and therapeutics have really, really made a difference, um, they haven't, um, com the vaccination hasn't completely broken the link between being a case and being, um, um, being hospitalised. Um, what we're seeing is the proportion of cases that leads to hospital admission is about a quarter of the winter rate that's just gone, but it's still a large number. 
and the number of cases is going up and up and up. So we're going to see more hospitalisation because the number of cases is going up at an exponential rate. It's not just pressure in the NHS. Um, there's also, sorry, not just pressure in hospitals. There's pressure across the NHS and the social care system um, is under exceptional pressure at the moment, which further underscores the need to act carefully, cautiously. Vaccination continues to go well. Um, being double vaccinated in those over 40 continues to go very well. Slightly less well um, for um, getting vaccination into the arms of people under 30. So it's a big area of focus now, especially men and especially under men in their early 20s. Um, all up for Sheffield, um, 380,000 first doses, 294,000 second doses that there are still more than 10,000 people aged over 50 who haven't yet had dose one. I encourage you in the strongest possible terms to reconsider if you've already reconsidered and if you haven't had made an, uh, an appointment to get vaccinated yet, please do so. It's really, really important. The second dose also really matters because that provides the most protection. Um, the gap between vaccinations has been brought forward. So it's now an eight week recommended gap and people can rearrange um, their vaccination appointment by going onto the national booking system or calling 119. Um, um, and remember, um, from the point of the second jab, it takes three weeks to develop further protection. So all up, um, uh, things are heating up. Um, uh, we are in the middle of the fourth wave. Um, the, 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 we can't prevent the fourth wave, that's upon us. There will be harm from the fourth wave. The thing that really, really matters now is our behaviour going forward that can dampen and slow the rate of growth. It can't stop it entirely. The what we can do, you know the drill, get vaccinated. We're pushing to maximise the speed and coverage of the COVID vaccination. As I say, there are still many tens of thousands of people who haven't had dose one, never mind dose two yet. The second dose also matters. Continue to work from home if you can and or gradual return to work. Wear a mask on public transport in shops, crowded indoor spaces. They protect you, they protect others. I will be wearing my mask for some considerable time to come. Open the windows, get ventilation. Fresh air really makes a difference. Most importantly, if you have symptoms, stay at home um, uh, because that's the thing that has broken the chains of transition more than anything else. Um, all of those things are still vitally important for protecting ourselves and others over the coming weeks and months.